Iditarod, Marie Abbott. Thank you, Marie. She's going to be counting down the mushers starting times as we keep talking through their bios here. So we are four minutes out roughly from the start of this year's race. Again, this is going to be on the southern route, a little ways past the ghost town of Ophir in the Iditarod Gold Country there in interior Alaska. The trail splits. The northern route heads toward Cripple and Ruby. This year they'll be heading west through the ghost town of Iditarod, the namesake of this race, onto Shagaluk and the Yukon River at Anvik, and then up the Yukon River through Grayling and Eagle Island to Caltag, where they rejoin the, the northbound trail. We anticipate a winner into Nome sometime Tuesday next week, not this coming week. <laughs> The race has been run in under nine days several times in the last decade, and that puts them in sometime early Tuesday morning. All right, everybody, welcome. March 5th, here we are on the lake, right here at the best spot. Been out here for about three hours, and uh, you're getting the public <laughs> best viewpoint here at the bottom of the chute. The start is not on the lake this year. It's just next to the library, as you can see. One housekeeping There's comment. There's the library Anyone right there. traveling the trail this afternoon, please be mindful that... There's the start. On it's not on the lake, lake. It's above the lake. A truck went partially through the ice right along the side of the dog trail. So if you're out on snow machine... Let us know where you're from. Make sure to share the feed. Tag a friend. Right Let us know if you've been here before. Beautiful day oh, here. I was just told that they got the truck out of the lake. So We're about that three is no minutes away. Hazard. Jesse Holmes up there, That's first team hear. for the official no restart. Was in that incident, thankfully. Just about 2 p.m. here in Willow. Light clouds, cool temps. Nice, beautiful night. Aurora last night. All right, here we are. Great trails. Bib number two is the first musher on this year's I Did a Rod Trail. It's bib number two from Brushcana, Alaska. Please welcome Jesse Holmes. Jesse, 40 years old, was born and raised in Alabama. He left there at the age of 18 to see Alaska, but ended up in Montana, where he worked as a carpenter for three years. He came to Alaska in 2004 looking for adventure and found it running dogs on a remote trap line on the Yukon River. This love for the wilderness and dogs eventually led to his competing in many races, both sprint and distance. He won the Kobuk 440 in 2017 and placed seventh in the 2018 Iditarod, taking home the honor of being the Rookie of the Year. A subsistence resident of Ninana, Jesse currently works as a carpenter and a television personality, appearing in the show Life Below Zero. It's a documentary that showcases the daily lives of people living in remote Alaska. He lists his hobbies as running ultra marathons, hunting, and fishing. His best finish just last year, third in nine days, four hours, 39 minutes, and 21 seconds. Alrighty, friends, you're right here for the start. Official day one, March 5th, 2023 here in Willow. You're right here on the fence line in the start chute. We got the best location here possible. Got a bunch of great photographers around me right now. We got Jesse has 15 deep behind me. Five times. Cold temps, nice day. Three top 10 finishes in 2018, 2020, and 2022. Same order as yesterday. Remember, yesterday was just a fun day. So today actually he's starts the race. Home over $100,000. Same race order. Price. Jesse Holmes up first. Bib number two. Honorary musher Lance Mackey. Jesse, 30 seconds. 30 Jesse seconds, here we go, friends, share the feed, let's get folks on, this is great. Around the world. Got a beautiful day here. From his appearance on Life Below Zero. So great to see you all, where you're from, dog lovers from all over the world here, race veterans, champions, ask questions if you got them, people want to help seconds. answer here. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. There he goes, the first musher in Iditarod 51, Jesse Holmes, bib number two. Next in the shoot, we'll have bib number three, Bailey Vitello from Milan, New Hampshire. <laughs> Bailey is our first rookie in this year's race. He says, I am a second generation musher from Milan, New Hampshire, and I've been running dogs since I was three years old. 
Ever since I began mushing with my family, I have aspired to one day take on the Iditarod Trail, which is the ultimate test of mushing abilities and a true testament to the connection that I have with my dog team. I have traveled right. throughout the USA, Canada, and there France, go, competing That's in some of the most there. famous and challenging races, and I look forward to taking on the Iditarod Trail. First team just left. They were just joining us. It just started in here. Got them out an hour, team hour age from to go here. Years old, and quite a few have some experience on the Iditarod Trail. I'm excited to see their athleticism and determination on this race. And with, Bailey, a one minute. and with a lot of hard work, I hope to cross under the Burled Arch in Nome with a happy and healthy dog team. When I'm not running my dog team, I'm the owner of Northern Exposure Outfitters Dog Sledding Equipment, which helps those who are new to dog mushing and seasoned mushers find the gear that's right for their team. During the summer, I'm also a seasoned raft guide and carpenter slash entrepreneur. Good luck to Bailey on this year's I did a rod trail. All right, friends, bib number three coming out here. 30 seconds. 30 seconds on BL. You can hear the When you head home tonight, everyone, please, on your smartphone or computer at home, go to iditarod.com. Sign up for the Iditarod Insider. You can follow all your mushers with the GPS spot trackers. Keep track of standings and see the latest Insider video coverage. Bailey, 10 seconds. 9, 8, 7, 6, Five, four, three, two, one. Millie, two minutes. So next in the shoot, we have bib number four, Milla Porcelain from Denmark. Milla started mushing in 1992, running a team of polar husky sled dogs for polar explorer Will Steger on a three month long sled expedition in Canada. She was hooked. Ever since she has lived with her sled dogs to experience the people and places in the magical north while finding ways to share the adventures with people around the world. She says she has slept more than 1,000 nights in a tent on the dog sled expeditions and feels very home anywhere in the circumpolar Arctic. Millie has executed 15 long haul expeditions with her polar husky freight dogs. Each expedition lasted two to six months and was as long as 3,000 miles in Greenland, Russia, Sweden, Norway, Finland, Alaska, and Canada. In 2011, she entered her... Bella, ten, one minute. She entered her first sled dog race, Long running dogs, the 800-mile Nadzhda Hope Race in Chukotka, Russia. She then moved to Alaska with Team Racing Beringia and her then partner. Together, they trained and raced with great success that culminated in the 2018 Iditarod Championship for Jor Olsen. All right, Mila Porcelain Mila here born in Denmark. Denmark. Until she came to America and did that first expedition at 18 years old. Her great-grandfather founded the world's first Arctic research station in Greenland. Mila, 30 seconds. The 2020 Iditarod Rookie of the Year, Mila in 2021, was the proud recipient of the Leonard Seppala Humanitarian Award. And she set a new time record for mushers from outside the U.S. She lives in Alaska with her sled dogs, but she says she's still Danish. She is racing this race for Team Racing Beringia. Good luck, Milla Porcel from Denmark. Milla, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And there goes Milla Porcel on Iditarod 51 out onto Willow Lake. Brian, two minutes. Next up, bid number five is Ryan Reddington from Kinnick, Alaska. He says he's racing Iditarod because he loves the Iditarod and the dog. His grandfather is Joe Reddington Sr. He's known as the father of the Iditarod for starting this race in 1973. His dad is Ramey, who has raced in the Iditarod 14 times. His grandpa, dad, and Uncle Joe are all in the Mushing Hall of Fame. He's got big footsteps to follow, and he's glad to be racing in the 2023 Iditarod. His best finish was seventh place in 2021. Henry, Ghost, and Splint are his lead dogs, but his daughter, and son TJ are also carrying on the family tradition racing. They love dogs and mushrooms. You can check out Ryan's website, reddingtonmushing.com. Ryan, one minute. In 2017, Ryan Reddington received the Most Improved Musher Award. And he's back out here to finish, hopefully beat his seventh place finish this year. His last three attempts have all been in the top ten. Eighth place, seventh place, ninth place in the last three Iditarods. 
All right, Ryan Reddington, friends, just the fourth Ryan, fib to go today. Seconds. His first finish in this race was in 2004 in 44th place. See all the and dogs bouncing around up there. Year. I wouldn't be surprised to see him up in the early on. Four, three, two, one. Ryan there goes Ryan Reddington. Christy, two minutes. All right, bib number six is Christy Barrington, also from Connect, Alaska. She is operating scene double sled dog racing with her twin sister, who we'll meet later, and her husband, Andy, in Connect. Mushing dogs has become part of that family life. Andy races and trains the dogs. Cat Barrington manages their website. Vicky Pohl sews the harnesses and dog coats. Ray runs trail support, and the entire family supports and sponsors from the sideline all the way from Wisconsin to South Carolina. This is Christy's 14th running of the Iditarod. She moved to Alaska 14 years ago to learn more about mushing from 1984 Iditarod champion Dean Osmar and Kasilov. Since then, she's raced all over Can all over Alaska and into Canada, competing in the Yukon Quest, Cusco 300, and Copper Basin 300, just to name a few. She's an ultra athlete who says she loves endurance sports and adventure. What better way to combine those two factors than running sled dogs in the most beautiful place in the world? Never sitting still in the off season, she competes in many running races from half marathons to ultra distances and triathlons with her sister Anna. She says, Anna and I are always in family competition and I'm so proud of her and her mushing and athletic career. And to be a part of it all with her is amazing. Christy and Anna pay the bills by doing carpentry work and landscaping. Christy would like to say thank you to the many fans, friends, family, volunteers, and sponsors for making all of this possible. We couldn't do this without you. She's looking forward to running another Iditarod with her incredible canine athletes. Best of luck to all the mushers and their amazing dogs. Christy's best finish, 16th place in 20, 2019. Christy, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. There goes Christy Barrington. Matt, two minutes. One half of seeing double sled dog racing. Next in the shoot, we have bib number seven. Please welcome from Two Rivers, Alaska, Matt Paul. Matt, 31 years old, was born and raised in Eagle on the Yukon River, where he worked his trap lines as sled dogs and guided week-long expeditions for his parents' company, Bush Alaska Expedition. There goes Christy Barrington. Look at that beautiful crowd out there. He started watching when he was just two years old, here and that began his dream of racing. The first generation of pups that would create the, the foundation of his future you racing right here with me. was born the summer he turned 16. Got the gimbal out here. He got lots of people Rivers, around. Alaska. To pursue competitive See that guy flying around his little sail up there. He's been out here all day. At the age of 22. All right, Matt Hall, friends. Aces Kennels sits on a 40-acre parcel of land beside the Chena River. He maintains an off-grid lifestyle by hauling water and firewood with his Smoke and Ace family of 30 Matt, Alaska one minute. Customers. For the last 13 summers, he has lived and worked for Alaska Ice Field Expeditions on the Denver and Mendenhall Glacier. Winters are spent training, guiding tours, and enjoying this encompassing life of mushing with his dogs. At the age of 26, he was the Yukon Quest champion in 2017, and he continues his racing career by competing in his fifth Iditarod in 2023. Matt's best finish in the Iditarod, 11th place in Matt, 2018. Matt, 30 seconds. Two years ago in 2021, he finished in 26th place. Again, good luck to Matt Hall from Two Rivers, Alaska. Bib number seven. All right, temperatures are pretty warm here. They're probably in the Matt, teens right 10, now. They were colder nine, this morning. Eight, Beautiful seven, day, though. Six, five, four, three, two, one. All right, there goes Matt Hall from Two Rivers. And good luck, Matt. Two minutes. Next up, the other twin sister of the Barrington. Bid number eight, Anna Barrington from Kinnick. She has been loving life in Alaska since 2007, racing sled dogs, commercial fishing, building and constructing homes, landscaping, and competing in running races. Jack of all trades there. With her sister, they are seeing double sled dog racing. 
Being able to raise and train dogs together has been a dream come true, she says, and racing the Iditarod is a perfect fit for these endurance racers. These dreams have been made possible because of help and support from friends, family, and sponsors. Anna started mushing when she was only nine years old. The twins have come a long way from mushing their pet dog in Wisconsin to giving tourist rides in the Sierras to training with former champion Dean Osmar and many mushing friends like Scott Jensen here in Alaska. Now dog mushing is a family affair with visits and help from mom, dad, and sister cat. And of course, their fur children, 30 amazing dogs. Anna lists her hobbies as All right, just working out some things with some friends here, biking, trying to get the right shots. Tons of people cross, behind me, folks. Speed. We've got about a thousand people behind us here. Anna We're right on the fence line, getting the best shots. Drawing in Nome in Anna Barrington up now. Christy Part just went a couple bits ago. Same start as yesterday, but this one counts. Clock started here. To a musher at the finisher's banquet in Nome. Beautiful day. Good to have you all here. 30 seconds. Anna's best finish was 17th place in 2019. Last year, she finished 23rd and was 24th in 2021. Her fastest time was yeah, 9 10, days, 9, 8, four 7, hours, 6, two years 5, ago. 4, 3, 2, 1. And there goes Anna Barrington, Nicholas, the other half two of seeing, seeing double sled dog racing. Good, good luck, Anna Barrington. Next in the shoot, we have bid number nine from Big Lake Alaska. Please welcome Nicholas Petit. Nick was born in France, raised in New Mexico, and then moved to Alaska. He began racing in 2011. He says, my dogs and I enjoy showing off their amazing abilities while enjoying the wonders of the Iditarod Trail. He has a number of high places in this race. His best finish, second place in 2018. There you go, friends. Great that shot, Ann, there. Days, 14 hours, 15 minutes, and 3 seconds. Lots of people here. His last Iditarod was 2021. He finished in sixth place. Working on getting those nice long shots, friends. In this event, he's never been outside the top ten. His first Iditarod was in Nicholas, 2011. Nicholas, one minute. Nick Petit. He finished in 28th place in 10 days, 15 hours, and 43 minutes. He won Rookie of the Year that year, 2011. He's right. also been the recipient of the Leonard Seppala Alaska Airlines Humanitarian Award in 2015 when he finished in 10th place. He's won a number of other prizes on this trail, including the Nome Kennel Club Fastest Time Safety Nicholas, Nome. 30 seconds. First musher to the Yukon awarded by the Lakefront Hotel, the Gold Coast Award, the Spirit of Iditarod Award, and the Bristol Bay Native Corporation First Fish Award awarded in Caltech. All right, Nick P.T., friends, about to start here. Bib number His total prize money in the Diderot, $226,000. Nicholas, 000. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Nicholas, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, go. There goes Nicholas Petit. Good luck, Nick. Katie Joe, two minutes. Katie Joe Dieter, bib number 10 from Fairbanks, Alaska is originally from Northwest Wisconsin. She moved to Alaska in 2010 after graduating from University of Wisconsin La Crosse and working seasonally around the lower 48 for several years. Her first job in Alaska was working for a dog sledding tour company in Juneau. While there, she met her now husband, Jeff Dieter. Falling in love with Jeff, his dogs in the state of Alaska was enough to keep her here. Katie Jo says, Alaska is so big and mushing is so complex there is always something new to learn to see or to do but the interest in running the Iditarod was not immediate she says that always seemed like too much um, she says I didn't know if I would ever have the skills to be able to do that and I didn't know if I wanted to either. eventually though racing here, became a natural progression one minute after years of helping Jeff train as I did her team. We got here first. She ran her first idea. Get you the best shot possible. Nice trailside shot. Didn't want to be too close to the gate because you missed the long shot. All the way to Nome, but not be considered and here we go. 
She says several Home of Home is about three miles away. Let us know where you're from. Come by and visit us at the Alaska Dog Center. Super great to have Danny yesterday come by and do a great tour with us. We've just been real blessed and down the side of the mountain. to have such a good community online and in person. There's Katie Joe. Progress and it was a dangerous situation. They were taken by a snow machine to a cabin and they spent roughly 24 hours in a cabin with 32 dogs. Jeff and herself were able to mush all the way rest, all the rest of the way to Nome. Katie Joe, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, go. Right on, Barbara Heath just joined us. Thanks so much, Barbara. Stand two minutes. She is hoping that her 2023 20, finish will be different than last year. Good luck, Katie Joe. To pit number 11, please welcome from Chattanooga, Alaska, Dan Caduce. Dan, 53 years old, was born and raised in Chippewa Falls, Wisconsin. He moved to Alaska in 1993, he says, for fun. He began mushing in 1994 and did many races in Alaska and Canada, including multiple Yukon quests. Before he just says, I ended up running the Iditarod. There we he go. Wife, Jody Katie Bailey, Joe, there you go. Got right you a long there. shot there, girl. Oh, Real proud of you. Alaska. Good luck out there. Dan, Dan Caduce here, Jody Bailey's is partner. The perfect place for training dogs. In his first I did a rod in 2010, Dan was rookie of the year. And for the last eight years, he has been an equipment operator and says he enjoys construction and woodworking Dan, as minute. well as hunting. He finished in 21st place in that rookie of the year yeah, finish in 2010. Yes, 31st position in 2014, 16th place in 2021, and last year vaulted up to fourth place in a total time of nine days, five hours, four minutes, and 15 seconds. He also won last year's coveted Leonard Seppala Humanitarian Award. Good luck to Dan Caduce, and I did a rod 51. Here we go, friends. So good to have you all here. Thanks for all the comments. Two years ago, he had the fastest times. Let's get this feed out there. Go ahead and share it. People, we need to see this one right here from the start line. Willow Lake, beautiful conditions. Lots of people, thousands of people. Thank you, Paul. Day one. 2023, I did a ride. Of official restart. Stand 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, go. All right, there goes Dan Caduce, bib number 11. Not your two minutes. All right, we've got Hunter Keith, bib, no, bib number 12 from Connect Alaska, another one of our rookies. He is 23 years old from Okanos, Michigan. He's been dreaming of becoming a musher since he was six years old. He first came to Alaska to run dogs in August of 2018, where he worked for the Girdwood Mushing Company on Crow Creek Road. That he was a nice one, friends. I'm getting my move down here. That was a nice training. Dan looked great. Look at all those crowds. We got fires and tailgaters all the way down for the, the next 70 miles, really. All the way down to Yetna Sweatin' and the big people partying from Alaska. And he won his second days are big, long, fun days for folks. Hunter's main dream has always been to run the Iditarod. And he can't wait to join his fellow mushers on the trail this year. Good luck, Hunter. Another rookie in this year's race. Seeing the trail for the first time. Hunter, one minute. <laughs> Again, folks, you can get out your smartphones, go to Iditarod.com, sign up for the Iditarod Insider. You will have access to all the GPS spot tracker data to follow your favorite teams as they traverse the state. And you'll have access to all of the live and Archive video content from the Iditarod Insider Productions. Top-notch video interviews of mushers out on the trail. Hunter, 30 seconds. Incredible footage of the dog teams running across the state. And expert analysis from Bruce Lee and Greg Heister. All right, friends. Hunter Keith here. Ramey and Barbara Reddington's dogs right from Kinnick. Beautiful Huskies. We're really proud of you, Hunter. Good luck out there. Hunter, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, go. All right, there goes bib number 12, Hunter Keefe, another Jennifer, rookie. Two minutes. Next in the shoot, 
we'll have bib number 13, another rookie in this year's race from Healy, Alaska. Please welcome Jennifer. Yeah, there. Go get him, buddy! Jennifer was born and raised in East Tennessee with bird dogs. She says she has always loved the outdoors, and after hiking a thousand miles on the Appalachian Trail one summer, she fell in love with long-distance yeah, adventures. In 2007, she came to Alaska and was introduced to sled dogs and long-distance racing and a dream was born. She says her first couple winters in Alaska, she worked for long-distance mushers learning the ropes. There goes Hunter Keep on the trail. I know Barbara and Ramey are very proud right now. She's been ra raising her own dogs and has completed several mid-distance races. Her dream has been to run a 1,000-mile race with dogs. So good to have you all here, friends. So good to celebrate dogs. And I did her on 51. Jen Labar here from Healy. The forecast, folks, for the this next few the days is beautiful for this part of the state. Yeah. Warming up some. It could be in the 30s during the day, but nice, cool nights. Good for running dogs. There's pretty good snowpack most of the way to Nome. As usual, the other side of the Alaska Range. Jennifer, 30 seconds. Has some rough trail through the fair well burn portions but for the most part it's looking like a really good trail this year for these teams so the best way to follow the race and the only way to follow the race is the insider 40 bucks gets you the trackers and some videos 50 gets you the whole package so that there's a pay firewall here Jennifer, 10, so after today nine, you got to get online and eight, follow them seven six five four three two one go there goes Jennifer Labar, bib number three. Brand two minutes. Next in the shoot, please give a huge willow welcome to last year's champion of the Adidas, bib number three, Brent Sass. Brent was born and raised in Minnesota, and he moved to Alaska over 20 years ago. After falling in love with the trails of Eureka, Alaska, he took over a homestead established in the 70s, and he has lived with his dogs there since 2012. He's a three-time Yukon Quest champion, receiving the Vets' Choice Award for his dog care twice in that race. And he was the champion. There goes the Jan, looking the good. Little Lake, baby. Wow. Brent and his team are excited to be back on the Iditarod Trail again this year. He says, "Much." I got a photographer next to me. He doesn't Here's know what I'm doing here, folks. It's, it's kind of fun when you're out here like a little civilian. Great photography crowd. We're going to get gorgeous pictures Brent, out of this. One Most importantly to him, it's all about the dogs and the relationship he has right. with each and every one of them. Every day is exciting, whether it's traveling on a new trail or learning something new about his Brent's team. ass, friends. Bib 14, well defending champ. Living and accomplishing goals is what drives Brent every day, along with all of his incredible fan support. Wild free mushing. Again, Here he is. Champ, he finished third position in 2021. In his rookie year in 2012, he finished 13th place and was the rookie of the year. Brent, 30 seconds. As you follow the tracker on Iditarod Insider, you'll notice that Brent likes to stay out of checkpoints. He prefers to camp on the trail. She'll, she'll move. Oh, maybe not. Sorry. Probably not. That's part of his racing strategy. Brent, 10, 9, 8, 7, Six, five, four, three, two, one, go. All right, there goes bib number 14, I did a rod champion, Brent Sass. There goes Slater, there goes Brent, getting all the cheers. Bib number 15, Richie Deal from Antioch, Alaska. Richie says he's 36 years old. When he's not mushing his dogs, he enjoys going for boat and snow machine rides with his wife, Emery. His greatest accomplishment is mushing and winning the 2021 Cresco 300. 
His um, best finish was last right year. Right on. Sixth Great job, Brent. With there a goes. time of nine days. Wild free hours. mushing and out the door, friends. That's Bib 14. Brent Sass, your defending his very champ. His first race. Richie, real deal up. And in 2013, he finished 36. You're right here in at the restart on Willow Lake. Place finish. He won at the a public Rise access line, point. Most improved mushroom. Got here about two, two and a half hours before the Richie race started. Dogs on the Make sure to get the best spot for Richie, you. One minute. So we're getting a long He's shot sweep four, here. Four, 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 the Antioch 150, Bogus Creek 150. Richie real deal in there. So he was the first person ever to win the Bogus Creek 150 and Tusco 300 in the same year. And he and his wife Emery have a little baby born just this winter. Richie, 30 seconds. Richie, the real deal. Matanuska Brewing has a, usually a Richie deal brew, folks. So if you're in the Anchorage area, Eagle River, that area, go ahead and grab yourself a She's Matanuska right Brewing. She's starting a pocket, in fact. They're pointing to her. Richie, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, go. Matthew, two minutes. There goes Richie Deal, bib number 15. I did around 51. Good luck, Richie. All right, now coming to shoot. Richie! Right here in Little Alaska. Real deal. 16, Matt Baylor. There he is, friends. Richie Deal from Antioch. I can't remember. Just Champion a great guy. Good luck out there, brother. Award winner in mid distance mushing. <laughs> He and his wife, Liz Reigns Taylor, own and operate Alaska Husky Adventures in Willow, where they offer locals and visitors a chance to meet their Iditarod team and experience the joy of dog mushing for themselves. Their race team name, 17th Dog Kennels, is a tribute to their supporters. For many years, mushers could take 16 dogs All right, to Matt Taylor, friends, right up here in the start shoot. It's getting zoomed out right there. There's Matt. ...that make it possible to race. He's originally from Ohio. And his passion for Alaska's official sport started with his summer job at a dog sledding camp in Team Failer here, 17th he dog. First Alaska Husky, That's their kennel nickname. Love for Back from the days when we used to have 16 start here. With help of friends, family, and mentors, a playoff the Seattle and Seahawks. Ayakita, he established his own kennel in 2013. Now he yeah, did ride start as 14 dogs only. That's the maximum team here, friends. 14 dogs. Uh, Matt Failer up. Place in 2018. In his rookie year, 2012. Matt, 30 seconds. 30 seconds for Matt Failer. He has twice been really appreciate y'all here. In 2016 and 2022, and he won the Sportsmanship Award in 2021. Good luck, Matt. And I did a rod 51. Matt, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, Three, two, one, go. Matt Failer. Good luck, Matt Failer. Two minutes. Next up, also from Connect Alaska, is Eric Kelly, bib number 17. He is 52 and was born in New Haven, Connecticut and grew up in Barner, Vermont. He spent his younger years hunting, fishing, riding snow machines, and exploring the Green Mountains. Later, Eric traveled extensively, chasing music and adventure before settling in Prescott, Arizona. After a chance vacation to Alaska in 2007, Eric and his wife Laura packed up the family and headed for the last frontier, where he took a job as a sprinkler fitter with Taylor Fire Protection. And there goes Matt Taylor. In 2013, friends. he met Jamaican and Eric Kelly here. Marshall Eric and Laura, good friends of ours. For the 2014 I did this there experience you go. created a passion for sled dogs and the sport of mushrooms. Eric Kelly, his wife, Laura, and their Eric kids do the everything. And, and we watched them build this kennel. So Husky cheer them on. If you have the ability, and buy them a couple bags of dog minutes, food. He decided it was this is a family that really does a lot with a little. A lot of passion, a lot of heart. The goal of running the it's taken about five or so years to build this the kennel. The Daybreak Kennel has grown to over 30 dogs. Over the past several years, he's enjoyed training for and running mid-distance races, improving his skill set, and bonding with his team of Alaskan Huskies. Eric looks forward to taking part in his second Iditarod race. 
All he right. finished last year in 34th place with a time of 30 seconds. 14 days, 6 hours, 11 minutes, and 11 seconds. He would love to give a big thank you to his wife and kids, as well as the handlers, sponsors, and all who have supported the Daybreak team. You can continue to follow Eric and his Daybreak Mushing Kennel at daybreakmushing.com. Eric, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, go. All right, Eric, have a great run. We're proud of you, buddy. Good luck, Eric Kelly. Eight, two minutes. All right, next up we have another rookie, bid number 18, Eddie Burke Jr. From he is Eddie flying. Burke. Look at him. Yeah, He's racing out of here. Eddie Burke Jr. was born and raised in Anchorage, Alaska. He's 33 years old and trains out of Alaskan Wild Style Racing Kennel in Nanana, Alaska. He started racing dogs just two years ago in 2021. His career highlights include taking Look at all third those people, place thousands in the and thousands of people lying in the lake here in Willow. And winning a 200 mile Iditarod qualifier in 2021. Ooh, what a beautiful day. He's also completed the Cusco 300, Yukon Quest 300, the Willow 300, and several other races. When he's not out here running his dogs, he loves to spend time with his daughter, Amelia. He would love to thank his mentors. Tony Browning, Aaron Burmeister, and his sponsor. Here we go, Eddie, a competitor. Let's see how he does. Eddie's run several qualifying races in rural Alaska for this event, including the K300, the Kobuk 440, and other races. All right, Eddie, let's see what you got here, buddy. You've been working hard. You got great yeah, dogs. Burmeister and Tony Browning right dogs here. He has let's see what he does with them. The greatest hairdo of any must. It's all fun and games until you get on the 10-day trail. And maybe as he's going down Willow Lake, he'll take his hat off and show you guys what I'm talking about. Good luck, bib number 18, Eddie Burke Jr. Eddie Burke, friends. Here he is. Come a long way from table 200 Keep an days. eye out for that incredible eight, mullet ten, on the trail. Nine, eight, seven, six, five. Four, three, two, one, go. All right, there goes Eddie Burke, Jr. Good luck, Eddie. Next in the shoot, please welcome bib number 19 from Fairbanks, Alaska. Another rookie in this year's race, Bridget Blackman. Bridget was born in Arkansas and moved to Alaska at the age of five when she got her first sled dog. Her passion and love of the sport began at an early age while competing in sprint mushing throughout her childhood across the great state of Alaska and Canada. She was introduced to mid and long distance mushing by some of the greatest mushers there goes ever. Eddie. You can see all the bonfires down there, the tailgate, thousands of people. It she just goes on and on, on friends. to receive her nursing degree, marry her high school sweetheart, Scotty. Meanwhile, we got the best spot for you right here. Boys. Yeah, Tony Browning and Aaron Burmeister. I mean, Tony's the quiet hero because he, Her even when Aaron was working in Nome, Tony's the one doing all the work in the Nana, and he's a heck of a guy, of heck of a musher, too. After helping her I used to cover him out at the races in Cotsview and she started Bethel, and just unsung hero. Here we go. On a hill. She has been raising and training her team in preparation to run the last great race. Bridget saw on here, Bridget friends. continues to work as an emergency room nurse, enjoys everything about the outdoors, and is working towards her master's in nursing. Although she knows she'll miss her kiddos while out on the trail, there will be no greater pleasure than seeing them under the world arch, watching their mama accomplish her childhood dream. Bridget, 30 seconds. Congratulations, Bridget. It's been fun following you to the start line Bridget here. started last year's race. Unfortunately, did not finish, but she's back for another try. And I did a rod 51. Best of luck to Bridget Watkins from Fairbanks, Alaska. Good luck, Bridget. Bridget, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, go. All right, everybody, good luck. Bridget Watkins. Jason, two minutes. Next to the shoot, please give a huge willow welcome to bib number 20 from Kavik, Alaska. Jason. There goes Bridget Watkins, friends. Right out of Fairbanks, going for it. 
their whole family Jason watching been running and racing those beautiful waves, all, all that energy, all that effort, money, and, and time put in right now. Times. He's also run the Cusco 300, okay. Cobuck 440, Copper Basin 300. We don't care who Kinnick wins, folks. We just want people to have a good mushing, take good Tuck care of their dogs, and have a good experience helping each other out. And the Yukon Quest 300. Two Rivers 200 and the Mail Trail 120, and of there course, four her dream. Rods. Part of what this After is about. Here we go, swinging back up to the start. There it is. The shoot this year is not on the lakes, friends, it's above the lake. The lake had overflow last year, so they moved it up. Back to Iditarod and dog races. So there's kind of a downhill run, which is why these teams are getting so much speed here. Running to Diderot. Jason, one minute. Jason Mackey. And mid-distance races again with a whole new team and a whole new me. The kennel motto is Mack is back. Jason Mackey, Kanick, Alaska. Musher's Choice Award. His rookie year in 2004, he finished in 26th place in 10 days, 18 hours, 58 minutes, and 27 seconds. His best finish was 21st place in 2017. Nine days, six hours, 19 minutes, and 23 seconds. He'll be carrying Lance's ashes up to Nome, friends. And of course, Jason, brother of the recently departed legend Lance Mackey, and part of the Mackey Mushing Dynasty. Good to have him on this year's trail. Jason, 10, 9, Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, go. Alright, there goes bit right, number Lance 20, Smith. Jason Mackey. Good luck, Jason. Next up, we have bit number 21, Riley Deich from Fairbanks, Alaska. He grew up in Farragut, Iowa, and started running dogs in Leadville, Colorado in 2010. While he was attending college, earning his major in outdoor recreation leadership. He moved to Alaska in the spring of 2013 to work for Alaska Ice Field Expeditions. While he was working there, he met Matt Hall. All right, there goes Jason Mackey. Right there here, and then a year with Ryan. Swing that cam around. Here we go. Another year with Riley Dice, Hall. friends. Before he started his own there kennel, he is. Dark Horse Racing Kennel in 2016. In the winter, he focuses on training and racing at his home north of Fairbanks. Riley, with his one minute, 25 dogs. He said he's really looking forward to running the 2023 race. Riley this is Dice, his friends. second year running the Iditarod. He first ran in 2020. He finished 25th place with a time of 13 days, 17 hours, 58 minutes, and 55 seconds. Good luck to Riley Dice from Fairbanks. As I said before, this year they're on the traditional Riley, southern route. Seconds. The Southern Route is run in odd years, but in 2021, we did the Out and Back Gold Loop Trail due to the COVID crisis. And they started and finished here in Willow. Yeah. Riley, just a Definitely. great guy, you guys. Riley's just a super hard worker out of Fairbanks. Nine, One of our eight, favorite mushers, seven, good friend. Six, five, four, three, two, one, go. Gerhardt, two minutes. Riley Dice. Riley Dice, bib number 21, now coming to the shoot. Bib number 22 from Cape Town, South Africa. Another yeah, one. Riley, go get him, buddy. Gerhard so proud of you, man. There he is. Gerhardt was born and raised near Cape Town. After graduating from high school, he joined the military where he obtained the rank of first lieutenant platoon commander with several tours under his belt. After military, he joined a restaurant group where he met Al Joe, AJ for short. They got married. Riley Dice fading off down the first bit of the will the lake there. Natalie Vander There's the crowd that closes in after Vander a while. Reputable and respected back out, Siberian around. Gerhard and AJ fell in love All right. with got three. Back up to the start here, friends. And exercise their three Siberians on dirt farm roads under the guidance of Andre and Natalie. Gerhard was introduced Gerhard to Gerhard from South Africa. Africa. He ordered his first Iditarod documentary in 2002. Yes, no. It was only the, the beginning of the end. They were hooked. 
He told his wife he wanted to do the Iditarod one day. In 2022, a 20-year dream came true. Gerhardt ran Mitch Seedy's puppy team. Here we go, Gerhardt. No, his race got short-winded by hurricane Arctic winds and a broken ankle. I'm sure, there's people from all in over cheering words, him quote, on. One of our farthest away competitors. Days, and all I needed was six more hours. Right place, Gerhardt, wrong time. This is the Iditarod. Now, he, Gerhardt says he has unfinished business for Iditarod of 2023. All right, bib number 22, we go to bib 34. So we got 12 more teams, about 24 more minutes, friends. Turn up the volume. For more information, visit his website, gatfoundation.org. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, go. There goes Gerhardt T. Hart Kelly, from Cape Town, South Africa. Good luck, Gerhardt. Next up, we have bib number 23, Kelly Marshall. Oh, Alaska. Kelly is a native of North Dakota, but he's lived in Big Lakes. There he is, Gerhardt. He started Looking good. Dogs in 2008 during his pediatric dental residence. Thousands of people here, he friends. He going on adventures Celebrating with his Iditarod. Five, Remember to follow the trackers, you got to get on the insider, and then you can follow the GPS for the next 10 days. After today, that's how you got to follow the race. All right, Dr. Maxner, our good friend, shout out to his wife Margaret. She puts in a lot of work. Big family, five children, Dr. Maxner, a dentist in our area here. Good friends with Dallas, so he's running Dallas's A team. This is the Dallas CV team, friends. His last two races in 2018 and 2020, both in 17th place. His fastest race was in 2016 in 21st position. He finished nine days, eight hours, 38 minutes. And All right, zoom seconds. back a little bit here, get a better sh starting shot. Good luck to Kelly Maxner Kelly, on Iditarod seconds. 51, bib number 23. You bet everybody's so good to see everybody online today celebrating dogs. I am not heading up the trail this year, friends. We have tours at the dog center, and I'd have to have a better uh, arrangement with the Iditarod um, insider in order to go up the trail. Uh, I have passion for what I do, and I don't like conflict. Two, one, go. All right, there goes bit number 23, Kelly Maxner. Dr. Maxner, congratulations. Dallas CV, congratulations. Local musher from right down the road, please welcome Rainy Smith. There he is, Dr. Maxner. Heading now, try to enjoy a big lake. Now the, the uh, Martin Rod Boozer and Dr. Tom Nolmeyer are running this Rod. year. And the late Lolly Medley, who Kelly Maxner is the representative of our Big Lake community Smith there. All over the state. Martin did 37 years in a row, and he lives in Big Lake. And then Dr. Nolmeyer does about every few years. And Kelly comes in, it's about his seventh run here. He leads his team these days. He was only 18 years there he is. old and has raced in and wow, won many other events throughout the state. Friends. He began mushing, he says, everywhere. as soon People as I could walk. Everywhere. And he won the junior Iditarod twice before his first Iditarod in 1994. Sons. Sun's poking through. Home builder and owns Photographers are all over the place. In I'm sure there's special airplane says, tours, the Rainy Pass, and all those wonderful Alaska minutes. adventures. So next Much year, plan on coming on out. Historical Alaskan roots. Ramey. And to challenge myself. My family loves sled dogs, and this gives us an opportunity to work together on a common goal. He operates Smith Racing Team Home Stretch Kennel with 70 dogs, and his wife, Becca, and their children, Ava, Banyan, and Coral. Ramey says his hobbies are family, hunting, and reading. Good luck, Ramey Smith, my Iditarod 51. We do love that Smith family. Their late father, Bud, a legend in this sport. Six times, won the fastest time from safety to no. We'll get a nice Best wide shot Iditarod here as they come down. Second place in 2011 in eight days, 19 hours, 50 minutes, and 59 seconds. In his most recent race last year, he finished Rainy in 13th 10, place. 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, go. 
Here we go. Ramy Smith from the legendary luck, Smith Ramey family, mushroom family. Congratulations to Becca, his wife, and all the family, all the children. They all help out. <laughs> look at him all calm and relaxed. Number he's such a good guy. He's nice and slow. He's got a little pull behind his the sled. There we go. Look at him. Just taking it nice and easy. She says she's excited to he's run. He's done a lot of these. No rush here. And hopefully she'll get to see the entire Iditarod Trail. Her ultimate goal is to finish with a happy and a healthy dog team. She says she grew up running dogs on her parents' trap line on the Porcupine River and was never quite about to get rid of the dog mushing bug. She loves to spend time out on the trail with her favorite four-legged pals. She also wants to say thank you to all of her family and friends for making this possible and her soon-to-be yeah, husband Ramey, for nice supporting and slow her on that runner today, just nice and steady. She finished 29 All right. one minute in Joanna Jagow, good friend of mine from Fairbanks. Of nine days, Got married this year, so proud of her. Grew up on the trap line. Here she is as an adult now, following her dreams. And I can see her getting her dogs amped up, ready for this race this year. I know they're excited. She's probably very excited. Right on, everybody. So glad you're here. So glad we're sharing in this. Mushers in the queue, folks. Joanna, 30 seconds. Here we go. Zooming out for Joanna to get a nice race. run out of here. Down the chute. Remember, the start's above the lake this year. There was overflow on the lake last year, so it's right next to the library. And they come down a little ramp here and across the lake. So I'm standing right before the shore. Joanna, 10, 9, 8, 7, Six, five, four, three, two, one, go. Joanna Jagow. Jesse, two minutes. Congratulations. Here goes Joanna Jago. Good luck, and I did her on 51. Next in the shoot, please welcome bib number 26 from Sea Lake, Montana. Yeah, Joanna, there she is, looking great. Oh, happy. A lot of work. Grew up on a cattle ranch in Montana where she lived for 21 years. A lot of great strong women in this race, friend. That's good for the future of the sport. She says she got her first sled dog when she was 15. She started learning about dogs. And junior mushing, too. We have wonderful junior female mushers. We have just a lot of hope. Dogs in Montana, seven years before moving to Alaska in the spring of 19. We're right here. We live in Willow. This is our life. This is our home. Year round, not just one race. And she was the winner of the invitational. Year round is our dog life. Every day, every month, every week. This is what we do, friends. So glad to share it with you. That's our mission: transparency, giving you great footage, promoting sports, giving you insight into who's who and how to follow the race. Both in 2019 and 2020. Used properly, we are synergy for the Iditarod. They just haven't learned how to use us yet, but maybe they'll figure that out. We can help bring more people to this race. The race was in 2017, fifth place in eight days, 13 hours, eight minutes, and 54 seconds. All right, we only have a few more teams left here. We're getting up there. Jesse Roy, remember, she finished a couple years ago with all 16 dogs in third place. Raising the bar. There's a whole concept of drop and dogs as a strategy. Place in the when Dallas was a commentator for Cupaws, he, he would break down his strategy all through that. Jesse, 10, I did a rod where he was announcing eight, every day, but Jesse seven, finished with all 16. Six, five, four, that's also super classy. Three, two, one, go. Maybe that's the model. There goes Jesse Royer on I did a rod 51. Good luck, Jesse. Good, two minutes. Next up, we have one of our last rookies for this year, bid number 27, Jed Stevenson from San Point, Idaho. Um, Jed grew up as an army brat in Germany. And in their there home she was goes, Jesse Royer from Sealy Lakes, Montana, fought a lot of fire around there. She lives in beautiful country, and we're always glad to have her up. ...is the place he must go for self-discovery. His dad read to him a book about mushing by Gary Paulson, a great... Here we go. Uh, a youth a youth fiction writer and it convinced him that what those moose antlers were saying was true okay, later right he on. learned how to train sled dogs working with billy snodgrass outside of jackson hole wyoming 
and then furtherers training in Alaska with Linwood Fielder and Gabe Dunham. After marrying his beautiful wife Amy and having twin boys, they settled down in northern Idaho. It's uh, Fiedler, friends. Linwood Fiedler, he's our neighbor. In the woods for Lives across family, the street. Bought a couple of sled dogs and started working towards the dream of running the Iditarod. As he and his dogs have grown together, they have forged a bond of loyalty and trust through thousands of miles of travel in the mountains. Jed has received the award Best Cared For Team in Eagle Cap 200 and the Idaho Sled Dog Challenge 300 and received the Sportsmanship Award at the Race to the Sky 300. Jed Stevenson, for Jed, friends. Seconds, Sandpoint, Idaho. Team. Jed He's Stevenson. He's also one of only four people to finish the Rocky Mountain Triple Crown, which includes it's 800 miles of racing over three and a half weeks. The journey to the Iditarod has been a pilgrimage into his soul where he has discovered the value of family, grit, loyalty, Jed, and 10, he has found 9, God. 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Go. Congratulations, Jed Stevenson, Sandpoint, Good Idaho. Here he goes. We'll see you later down the trail. See you, Gnome Jed. Right. Number wow, these guys seem like they're really flying out of the start here because they are. You can use more brake if you want, but it's a downhill run. The dogs are excited. Thousands and thousands of people. His biggest influences for his pushing were his late uncle. You noticed how Ramey Smith, 25 I did rides later, took it nice and slow. Says I was a quiet kid learning the ropes of different styles, asking many questions. Just listening to the words from the many mushers visiting the Reddington home in Connect. Wade okay, has here we are. Wade Mars, stump jumping Wade Mars here. Moved from Alaska a couple in years ago. In 2016 and 2021. His rookie year in 2009, he finished in 47th place. And his fastest race was in 2017 when he finished 6th place in 8 days, 18 hours, 43 minutes and 40 seconds. He's also twice won the fastest time safety to Nome awarded by the Nome Kennel Club in 2015 and 2019. Wade, 30 seconds. Dave number 28, Wade Mars. In 2017, he won the Spirit of Alaska Award, first to McGrath, and the Gold Coast Award, first to Unifleet, before finishing in 4th place that year rather sixth place that year wow, great. All right. Wade is happy to be back in Alaska running the Wait, Iditarod 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, go All right, All right. good luck Wade Mars, right, this number 28 hitting the ice of Willow Lake headed for Nome, Alaska about a thousand miles northwest of us right now Fist pumping way, there he is. You may recognize that name. His son Bailey took off earlier. Greg says he began mushing about 25 years ago and was drawn to the idea of spending time. There goes with my Wade dogs Mars. Bonus, Must be surreal for him to be back. They've been living in the 48 down there. Sure, the cost of living's most. cheaper. Dog Together, food's way cheaper. Meat's way cheaper. But you got to miss Alaska. Learned as much as we could from other mushers' books and advice along the way. Only one Alaska. After realizing that there was his son's natural given gift. He took a few years off from there he to goes. support his team and training. All right, we're getting down to like the last five bids now, Saturday I think. It's about 10 more minutes of start here. Awesome. Make sure to share it. It's been one of the most gratifying things. He's here we go. There's one minute. A little bit of sun on our faces. His current team is full of goofy and happy-go-lucky Alaskan Huskies who are more than excited to take on any trail ahead of them. They range in age from three to seven years old, and about 50% of the team has some range of experience on the Iditarod Trail, which will be very helpful when the going gets tough. He's looking forward to experiencing the Iditarod Trail not only with his dogs, but also with his son. And finally, he's going to accomplish this long time dream. Here we go. Again, the last of the 11 rookies in this year's race. Good luck to Greg Vitello from New Hampshire. We're zoomed in on Greg's team there, friends. Seeing this trail for the first time. Greg, the 10, 9, 
9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, go. Good luck, bid number 29, Greg Vitello. Christian, two minutes. Next to the starting shoot, please welcome bib number 30 from McKay, Australia, Christian Turner. Christian, a 34-year-old Australian born and bred dog musher. There he goes, Greg Vitello. That's got to feel time. good. Beautiful and shot again, there. Love looking, looking at all the people. To race with Mitch CD's dogs for my dinner ride. All the hand tours. gestures, lots of fist pumping, pointing. Christian says, I love the wilderness and landscapes of the Iditarod Trail. Couldn't imagine a better time than enjoying the trail with great dogs. Here we go, great. friends. Christian Turner stopped by yesterday after the restart. His rookie year in 2014. So good to see him. Good friend from Australia. Got married last year. Had a baby. Doing great. Mitch called him up, said you want to mush the 18. He said yes. Seconds. Here he is, mushing the 18. So this is Mitch Seavey's team, friends. Dallas's team is with Dr. Maxner. Mitch's team is with Christian Turner. Finishing the race so you do have days, both CD18s out here two, so on the Jitterod Trail 2023. 2023. Christian's a very tall, handsome guy. He's about 6'5", very calm, back home, with lots of beach time, lots of beautiful Australian life, but he's Again, thank you to our lead not a rookie. He's been out here before. He's worked in the last He's been on this trail. He knows what Ryan he's doing. Air, Linden, he's looking for a top 10. He was 15th last time. their help, Christian, 30 seconds. Without their sponsorship, yeah, we got we people on the way. Let's zoom out. Event. Please, if you see representatives from those organizations, say a huge thank you for helping us get this race going every year. Christian, 10. Christian nine, Turner, friends, here eight, he is, the legend. 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, Two, one, go. Aaron, two minutes. All right, next in the shoot, bib number 31, Aaron Peck from Grand Ferry, Alberta, Canada. Yeah, Christian! There he is, slowing down, getting his Aaron move on. He's got Mitch's colors on there. For those of you who are pursue excellence on the world stage of distance, I did a ride fans. You know that Mitch CV, CV's I did a ride. They have that color scheme. Danny CV running the company there, like the, the brilliant business manager that he is. Very successful. If you're down in Sterling or Seward. Aaron finished in 51st place. There he goes, Christian Just Turner, mid is 18. His best position of All right, place. friends, we're getting Thank there now. $22,375. We're getting there. We're surrounded by people. His I got fastest race was in 15, 20 people behind me. When he finished 14th place in eight days, 10 I want hours, to give a big shout out to our vacation seconds. rental guest, John. They knew I was coming here to film when they left the vacation rental in amazing condition. So it only took me a few minutes to clean it, about an hour. Super grateful that got me out here so I could stand right here for the past four hours. In 2019, with my buddy from Colorado, photographer here. Yeah. He's doing a piece. Big Marshall camera there. Checkers All the photographers the kicking butts to look for their photos online and in tourism journals. People in the community is deemed to carry the spirit. We're just of public access here. here. No special sure. nothing. No Perfect handle badge. No nothing. Just you could have done this too. People who embody his spirit. I wanted to bring you right here so you could experience Cuba. Willow. Sow the seeds, you come and hopefully next year. Those communities, those villages. Come on out. Come by the house, we'll sit the by Lord. the fire. Aaron won that in 2019. Aaron, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, Dr. Peck, 5, Aaron Peck. 4, 3, 2, 1, go. Good luck to Aaron Michael, on the trail. Two minutes. There goes Aaron and Peck. All right, we're coming down to our last final mushers of the race this year. We have good numbers. Yeah, we'll get him, Aaron. He's been a friend. He's been a customer, and he's a great Canadian representing yeah, Canada yeah, here. So if you're a Canada here. fan, here you are. Uh, Mike the Peck says family we can do all this in. race one more time. 
He plans to run this mostly to enjoy classy, the trip. Classy, classy, nice guy. There he is. Alaska. Camera guy in the way, okay? He's got a nice group of young, talented dogs, Trying and they'll the use year. this run as part of training. A couple more bibs, and then we're K300. following the trackers, friends. A couple more bibs, and it's over to the trackers. Dogs that make no matter how long it takes, go home with a new toughness. Insider account's going to cost you thirty nine ninety five. The dogs seem to know that they've accomplished a top race. No way around it. This is his eighth attempt at the Iditarod with his best finish being in 2012. He finished with a time of nine days, 13 hours, minute. 12 minutes and 18 seconds. His rookie year, he ran in 2010. He finished 26th position with a time of 10 days, 6 hours, 44 minutes and 36 seconds. He received the Sportsmanship Award in 2014. Mike is the son of Mike Williams Jr. Mike Mike Williams Senior. Mike Williams Senior. Good friend of ours too. I just saw him at the Tug 150. Always good to see Senior. They both make their home in Akiak, Alaska, where they live and train dogs. It's on the Kuskokwim River between Bethel and Aniak. He's run many races in that part of state, Mike, including Akiak, Bogus 150, and K300. Seven. Six, five, four, three, two, one, go. All right, there goes bid number 32, Mike Williams Jr. on Iditarod 50. Congratulations, all of Akiak, all the elders, everybody who's helped all out right, Mike Williams Sr. and Jr. Here 33. they are. One of the two Congratulations. In this year's race. Please welcome from Bethel, Pete Kaiser. High five there, looking good. Mike Williams Pete Sr., Kaiser, one more Kaiser, year on the Bethel trail. It's a huge production to get ready for Iditarod, right. even more so when you're in the village, like Kaiser and Richie D. and Mike Williams. So congratulations. Our family has always had dogs. Extra work. I've been mushing since I was a kid. Watching the K300 every January sparked my goes. interest in long-distance racing. Trying to give him his due, and then Pete Kaiser's up, and we're almost done here, friends. Worked out pretty well, I'd say. He has finished in the top ten seven times, including a first place finish in 2019. Peter says he enjoys boats. Pete, his wife and family are incredibly kind. Remember being out in Bethel for the K300 and just being super impressed with the hospitality. Peter won in 2019 in nine days, 12 hours. I've chased sled dogs for years now. Been filming for a decade, friends. We're raced in five championships in the world myself. And won two dog ski during. So I got a background here, but I can always tell good people when I see him. The Kaisers are good people for sure. In 2020, he had the fastest time safety to know. In 2019, he received the Achieve More Award, the Fish First Award, awarded by Crystal Bay Native Corporation, and the Golden Harness Award. Pete guys are about to North. round out. Pete, 30 seconds. In his rookie year in 2010, he finished. So it goes in Pete and then place. Deke, and then we're done, fans. And he's back for another go. Mulch Creek 150. Eight, seven, six, five. Four, three, two, one, go. Pete Kaiser, Kaiser friends, here he is. Champion, bib number 33, Pete Kaiser from Bethel. Great. Next up, we have bib number 34, our final musher for the 51st Iditarod, Deke Nakaborn from Fairbanks, Alaska. He was born and raised in Pella, Iowa. As an alumnus of Western State College in Gunnison, Colorado, he earned dual degrees in business and recreation. Before there moving goes. to Alaska, Guys he are lived friends. in Florida, away. where he was a park Out ranger on the trail. in the Everglades National Park. Last musher, Deke His is up. His dream has always been to live in Alaska and compete in the Iditarod. He currently resides in the Goldstream Valley of Fairbanks, Alaska, where he spends most of his summer in 40 mile country near Chicken, Alaska, and works for the Bureau of Land Management. He began mushing in 2008, and one minute has run a number of distance and mid races since then. Deke is the father of Nolan, who's seven years old, and lists his hobbies as being a dad, fixing things, and mowing the lawn. This is his third attempt at the Iditarod with his rookie year being in 2020. He finished 27th with a time of 13 days, 18 hours, and 8 minutes. 
Um, he last ran in 2022 last year, finished 29th. Deep, 30 seconds. With the time of 11 Final days, team here, four hours, 12 March 5th, 2023. Seconds. I did a restart. Final again, team, team is our last number 33. On the trail. I did rock 51. Bib number 34. Headed out onto the Susitna River here after crossing the lakes here outside of Willow. 8, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, go. All right, there goes Geek Nakabor in bib number 34, the last musher on the trail. And I did it on 51 here in 2023. Look at that, Thank there he goes. Thank you High School Choir and Color Guard. Thank you to all of our sponsors. Please recognize last them and thank them the for supporting the last crowd. great race on earth. He stopped, he went ahead and hooked down there. Let's see what Thank he Thank you to official timekeeper, Marie Abbott. Oh, he's back, he's Official co-commentator, Caitlin Gwynn. I'm Andy Angston, it's been fun. Again, go to Iditarod.com. Check out the Iditarod Insider. There are various packages for purchase there. You can follow the GPS spot trackers, see where your favorite mushers are on the trail for the next 10 plus days, and get all of the high quality video content produced by Insider Productions. It's gonna be a fun race. There's a, gonna be a lot of great commentary and expert analysis to follow with at the website. Go there on your phone right now before you head home. Please drive safely. Take your time on the road. We're all going to get back down south one way or another on the on the highway. Have a great week and enjoy Iditarod 51. Thank you Look very much. Look at all much. these people, friends. There goes Geek, last team out. 2023 official restart. Thousands of people down there. Thanks so much. We'll see you in the next time. We'll leave it at that. Yeah.